brand new week. We thank God this week for his word. I hope you're doing well in the Lord, that you're blessed and that you're highly favored and that you know you're loved and that you know you're cared for and that God wants the very best for you. We are in the book of Psalms, continuing our study through this wonderful quarter. Hasn't it been great? I hope you've been blessed. Uh, this week, our lesson is titled Lessons of the Past, Lessons from the Past, Lessons We Get from the Past. My name is Dwayne. I want to welcome you into the Word of God today. Uh, and this beautiful, beautiful uh, memory text that we have for this week, I want to read it to you, verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 78, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works, which he has done. I want to pass on the good things that God has done. We're going to learn this week about uh, uh, salvation history, about the history of God's people, how he has been faithful to them, how he has kept them and watched over them. And we're also going to learn that some of that history is not all great. It's not all great. Uh, sometimes we do things that really... Uh, demonstrates that we don't have faith in God and that we don't really trust God. And that's what we see, for instance, in Sunday's lesson, God's unstoppable faithfulness. I like that word, unstoppable faithfulness, because if it was left up to us, he would have stopped a long time ago, but he does not stop. In Psalm 78, the focus of this day, uh, uh, the psalmist goes through, Asaph goes through Israel's history, demonstrating God's faithfulness to them and then their unfaithfulness to him. And what is core is really verses 7 and 8 of Psalm 78. There's a lot there, but 7 and 8. Listen to this. The Bible says that they may set their hope in God. So God has done things that we may set our hope in God, 7 and 8, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So God is saying, don't forget what I've done. Keep my commandments. That's what God's saying. And then verse eight, and may not be like their father, stubborn and rebel, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. God is saying, your past generations have done the same thing. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Don't hit repeat. Why is it that my goodness does not exact and evince a change in your behavior? You've got history with me. Your people have history with me. Don't pass on bad stuff. God is saying change and change now. Uh, God's unstoppable faithfulness ought to lead us into relationship with him and a desire to be better than the past. May God bless us today to change history for him. Hello, my precious friends. My name is Dwayne. It's Monday. We're in the word of God one more time. Today's title, Remembering History and the Praise of God. Remembering History and the Praise of God. Do you know your history? I mean, do you know the acts of God, the mighty acts of God, the faithfulness of God in your life? Do you know your history? Do you remember the history, the good things God has done? Uh, I really hope you do. In Psalm 105, that's the focus for today. Psalm 105. We talked about Psalm 78 yesterday. Psalm 105 is absolutely wonderful. In this Psalm, God is demonstrating his covenantal faithfulness to his people. And how does he do it? He walks the line with the patriarchs. He said, I made a promise. I made a promise to Abraham that I would bless him and make his seed numberless and that his seed would inherit a wonderful, beautiful promised land. And God keeps it. We go on to Jacob, and then God keeps it in his faithfulness. When, 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 when his people are, are in captivity, he raises up Moses, and he brings them out, and then God takes them into the promised land. God is faithful. And Psalm 105 comes through this history and recounts it in excellent detail. Why? So that the people will remember the faithfulness of God. Now, what's interesting is, Unlike Psalm 78, Psalm 105 does not talk about the people's mess. It doesn't talk about the people's mistakes. Have they made mistakes? Yes, Psalm 78 makes clear they made mistakes. But Psalm 105 does not linger on their mistakes. Why? Because God is making a point. In spite of your mistakes, I'm faithful. Not, not that you should continue making mistakes. Not that you should continue doing stuff that you know you shouldn't do. But I just want you to focus on my faithfulness because my goodness leads you to repentance. My goodness leads you to transformation. And in this wonderful day study today, in, in this Monday study, you're going to 
find out that God has been faithful and that God wants to continue to be faithful and that we are the fruit of God's faithfulness. We are the fruit of God's faithfulness. Don't make God a liar. Don't make what he's done in the past uh, a fraud because we never deserved it and we still don't deserve it. But prove by our actions and our choices and our behavior through the power of the Holy Spirit that we indeed see God's faithfulness and we honor it. How do we honor it? We honor it by obedience, by obedience and by love and by praising his name. This psalm is about praising his faithfulness and praising his name. Praise the Lord, everyone. Once again, we are in the study of the book of Psalms this week, lessons from the past, lessons from the past. My name is Dwayne, and I want to welcome you again into God's word today, remembering, remembering history and repentance, remembering history and repentance. We're in Psalm 106, just one Psalm over from yesterday. Psalm 106, powerful, powerful Psalm in God's word. It recounts not just stories of the Exodus, not just the wilderness sojourn, not just Canaan, but in those stories, it talks again about areas where God's people let him down and God was faithful. Remembering history, uh, remembering history for the purpose of repentance and transformation. That's what this psalm is all about. Listen to these wonderful verses, powerful verses, troubling verses we find in Psalm 106, beginning at verse 43. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. Amen? He regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. And for their sake, he remembered his covenant and relented according to the multitude of his mercies. Oh my God. He also made them to be to be pride, pitied, ah, made them to be pitied by all those who carried them away captive. And then beautiful verse 47, save us. O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to, to triumph in your praise. Now, this psalm, these verses speak to something very powerful to me. What they said to me was, God knows the, God knows the history. You can read the role. He knows that, that, that we have done some things, that when he has blessed us, we have rebelled against him. When he has honored us and, and given us favor, we have sometimes messed up. But here's the thing that's powerful. The Bible says when they cried, when they called on God, when they said, Lord, I'm sorry, I know I messed up. Please forgive me. The Bible says he relented. Not only did he relent, but he gave them favor while they were in their captivity. Oh, I feel the Lord. He gave them favor while they were in their captivity, in their challenging season. While they were messing up, God favored them. And then he pulled them out so that they could cry, save us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Bring us out so that we can praise your name and honor you and glorify you for the wonderful, worthy God that you are. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? God is saying, remember the history. Remember the repentance. And remember that you could still repent and you could still come to me and I will have mercy for I will abundantly pardon. But that doesn't allow us to make, uh, 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 to bastardize God's grace, to make it of none effect in our lives. It should bring about heartfelt change. That's the study for 106. Psalm 106 today, be blessed as you look at our history of repentance. God bless you. Hello, my precious friends. Welcome to another day in the study of God's word. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Welcome again to the word of God. My name is Dwayne and today's lesson is going to be a blessing, the parable of the Lord's vine. If you read on in this Psalm, this is Psalm 80. If you read in Psalm 80, the Bible says that God took a vine. He, he pulled it up from the roots out of Egypt. 
That's God's people in captivity. God took them out of Egypt and then planted them in the, prom in the promised land. And you know how it is when a vine, a vineyard is planted and a vine dresser is tending it, it's care, it's watered, it, 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 it's protected. It's the, 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 all, anything that's growing that shouldn't be there is, is pulled up and taken out. A vine is cared for and God cared for his vine and blessed his vine. But the Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah that, 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 that God planted this vine, but now is wondering how did this vine become wayward? How did this vine get off growing in the wrong direction? What happened to this vine? So much so that in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says that God has to uh, 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 trim and prune this vine. And God pronounces great judgments against his people. And sometimes has to put them in derision and in difficulty and in pain. But God will not hold his anger forever. And so in this psalm, Psalm 80, the psalmist is pleading, Lord, come back. Come back, God. Come back. Come back. Come back. We messed up. It's bad, but would you come back? And God is the God who comes back. Like a love-starved teenage girl, God hears the cry. He cries for his people just like they cry for him. His heart is moved with compassion because he loves them. We are his vine. We are his tender shoot. We are meant to grow and to flourish. But that flourishment and that growth is predicated on obedience to his word and on faithfulness to his, his, his cause and to his word. So that's our message for today. It's very simple. He'll come back. He'll come back. He wants to come back. We are his tender shoot. His precious vineyard. He'll come back, but will we come back? Will we come back? Will we come back to him? That's the question. And I pray that we answer it in the affirmative today. Yes. Yes, Lord. Come to me. I come to you. God bless you. Hello, my dear precious friends. Have you ever had a praise party? My name is Dwayne. Come to the praise party today, beloved. Get ready. I'm just telling you, Psalm 135 is our study for today, Psalm 135, and it is an absolute praise party. Uh, are, are we allowed to celebrate the goodness of God? The Bible tells us in Psalm 135 that God has been supreme in history, and that's the title of our, our study today, The Supremacy of the Lord in History. And let me tell you, he's supreme. This psalm recounts not just what God has done, but how God has overruled. In fact, it, it, it crystallizes somewhere in verse 7 of, of, of 6 of, of Psalm uh, 135, where the Bible says that God does whatever he wants to do. Uh, that that, that, that it is, he ascends above everything else. He he took out the Egyptians and he took out Sion and, and, and Og of Bashan and that God gave their land to the people of God, that God overrules history and that God judges his people. It says that too. He judges his people. But this judgment is, is not the judgment of punishment. This is the judgment of vindication, that he vindicates the cause of his people, that he defends the oppressed and the marginalized. God is saying, I have heard your plight. I have seen your condition and the supremacy of my power will bear on your situation. I'm coming to rescue your need. Now, why is this praise party happening in Psalm 135? Because God wants us to trust him and be faithful to him. If you go in Psalm 135, 15 to 18, verses 15 to 18, the, the, the Bible is encouraging us, the psalmist is encouraging us not to worship stuff that ain't God. So if God has been supreme in history, and if he's been amazing, and if he's been tremendous, worship him and him alone. Don't worship your bank account. Don't worship other people. Don't put other things before God. If God has been as awesome as we know he has been in our history, and you can trace it, that's why you ought to use your mind and your memory to remember the goodness of God. If God's history has been that good, the least you can do, the least I can do, is worship him. So get your praise on. It's time to worship. It's time to lift God up high above everything else because he is supreme in history. That's going to come through today. If you get in this word, get your head around Psalm 135. It's going to bless you. And then write your own version. Sit down and write your own psalm to God of his blessed supremacy in the history of your existence. God bless you. 
Hello, my precious friends. My name is Dwayne, and I want to thank you for walking with us, walking with me this week in Lessons from the Past, Lessons of the Past. That's the book of Psalms, and that's been our study this week. Haven't we been blessed? We've learned that we've got a wonderful history with God that we ought to teach to our children. Psalm 78, verses 3 and 4, to generations to come of the Lord's strength, of the Lord's faithfulness, and that we might celebrate and praise his wonderful works to the children of men. We have learned that he is, his grace and his faith has been unstoppable. His faithfulness has been unstoppable to us. That, that in Psalm 78, through all of our ups and downs and all of our unfaithfulness to God, God has remained steadfast and faithful. Psalm 106 taught us that we have a covenantal relationship with him, that God continues Psalm 105 and 106, really. 105 and 106 teach us that God's faithfulness has been linked uh, in, in, in salvation history to his patriarchs, to those who have punctuated his faithfulness to Abraham, his faithfulness to Isaac and to Jacob, to Moses, and, and that we are the covenantal fruit of that faithful relationship, that God has continued to keep his promises, and we are proof that he has done that, that he has been a good God, and that he will not fail us in our time of need. Oh, but sometimes we've just got to cry to him. We learned that this week, that we can cry to him and he will come back that he will restore, that he will not abandon us forever. Psalm 106, that, that he loves us and wants the very best for us. And then Psalm 80, Psalm 80 taught us that, 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 that we are a special vine, that, that God has uprooted his people out of Egypt and planted them in the promised land. And by the way, that vine, the spiritual vine that we have been grafted in, that's who we are today. Those who have been grafted in to the family of God, that that vine still grows. It still flourishes, but it flourishes when we obey and when we worship God and when we honor God as the only God, the supreme God in our existence. That's the end of the week right there. The supremacy of the Lord in history, Psalm 135. And I don't know about you, that Psalm blessed me. It caused me to praise once again the name of God. God is dispensing in that Psalm with any talk about his people's mess, any talk about their weaknesses. The Bible is saying in that Psalm in no uncertain times, God has done it. Not only has he called out his people, he has sustained his people. He has watched over his people. He has protected his people. He has kept his people. And now he wants to continue to finish salvation history with those of us today who live in the very presence of God. That's good news. Can you believe it? After all we have done, God says, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on my people. I still love them. And I still want, I still got, ha, 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 I got it. I still have more history to write. I still got some things yet to do. I still want the world to know that I'm a good God, that I'm a faithful God, that as they watch my people and the way they live in relationship with me, that they will be drawn into that relationship as well, that they will desire the same relationship. The blessings of God, the faithfulness of God is not just so we can consume it upon our lust. It is so that others will know the God that we serve. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you real good. Praise his name. Be faithful. Mm -hmm.